I heard what he said, but I don't understand what that means. As people come in. I would. Uh, we are GD 425, our senior game project class. And uh, throughout the semester, we've been working on a game called Grim Shadows. Now, the reason why we came up with the idea to actually work on one game in one giant group is because we all kind of wanted to focus on a, uh, a set job so that when we get out of college, the job that we've been working on, uh, we have experience in uh, so that we could. Get the, uh, get the experience in uh, real life. Um, so as for the game development, uh, I'm going to throw that over to John Krupa over there. He'll talk a little bit about the story uh, of Grim Shadows. Yeah, so the, the way that we came up with the story, we wanted to uh, draw a lot from uh, a dark theme and gaining your life back. So you play as Blake Emerson. Uh, your mission is to regain your life. Uh, we drew from some inspiration uh, from the game Slender. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, we have a lot of dark uh, and shadowy elements presented in our game, and we also touched upon a little bit of mythology as well, uh, presenting uh, Karen as a possible mentor to you throughout the game. So uh, there's a lot of mystery and intrigue uh, with that. So uh, I'll pass along to these guys how they uh, brought the art and 3D models. human-like or just being a skeletal form of the undead. Uh, we actually ended up going with the skeleton. And there's some artwork for Grim as well over there, just to get the feel. We want him to uh, have a hooded cloak on, be kind of like real shadowy and mysterious and just floating around. Uh, and then had some more concept art for the overall theme of our area, which is a giant park with different stages within it, like a house cemetery, a river, um, then our soul stone, which will be explained a little bit more for you afterwards. Um, and then I personally modeled uh, Sharon and Grim, which uh, Grim is right here, and Sharon's inside the boat. Both of that took quite a long time to try and work with different techniques and try to figure out how to do everything else. Um, do you guys want to talk about your other models? Yeah. Yeah, my name's Sean. Um, uh, my job was um, essentially I made uh, environment pieces, um, and then I also put together the graveyard scene. Um, we worked at 3D Studio Max to build all the pieces, brought them into one scene um, <coughs> for each uh, area within the game. Um, we also set up animations to be used in our trailer, and. Um, yeah, essentially what my job was basically was churning out as many environment pieces as I could. Um, most of them used in the graveyard. I had a couple for the playground area. And, yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, so my name's Derek, and I worked on the river scene. Uh, just like Sean, I worked on putting a lot of different 3D models together as well. So I made, like, the axe you'll see in the playground scene. I made uh, Grim Scythe and just various other things that were put into the scene. But my main focus was the river scene, as you can see here. And so I basically, uh, the river took a long time, water took a long time to make. That was especially difficult. Everything's being 3ds Max, like except for, but you'll see later on in the trailer it animated and how it came out in the end. So that's basically what I did. I'm John. Uh, my focus was the abandoned house. There's three renders over here. Uh, we've got the abandoned house here, and two more down below. Um, the biggest part of that I was really just building up the walls on the house. Uh, I tried two different ways of doing it. One starting with a spline, which didn't work out too well. And then going back and just doing it bottom modeling. Um, 
getting the textures on there, we were talking earlier about Crazy Bomb. Uh, very good program. So we used to most of our textures in here. Um, really, the coolest focus I liked was the Lock and Chains, which you'll see much closer up in the trailer. Um, just, uh, it took a little time to get them done, but I like the way they came out the most. And then for the actual like, environment area, I uh, used Aaron's ground and, and trees and bushes and stuff. That all made it look up really cool, nice and scary. My name is Mike. I, uh, I worked on the playground scene. Now, uh, as was mentioned earlier, we, we wanted to go with the, the dark feel, as John said. And I spent a lot of time with the playground scene, making it very much a, a dark area, like a dark playground, essentially. Very, very creepy, very scary. I used models from both Derek and Sean to combine them in and create the, the area there, and the animations using 3DS Max as well. And from using that, uh, along with other things, we also had to create a bunch of other finalized steps, such as the top-down map, which is over here on my left. This was created using Photoshop, as was most, most of the concept arts that we have. Um, it went through very, a lot of different iterations with the storyline and everything else, trying to figure out what quests would go where, what would look the best. Once this was finished, it was then taken by myself and handed over to Chris Libertucci, who will talk a little bit more about the finalization of the concept art and everything else up here. Well, as we go through, one of the things that we need to do is we need to have some finalized pieces so that people know where to go from there. It doesn't help the modelers if they have no idea what the scene is going to look like. So one of the things that I worked on was concept art. And I worked on quite a few of the pieces to try and get an idea of what a scene will look like. I worked on things like the soul stone, the finalized tombstone, graveyard concept, um, inside the house, things like that to just kind of give the modelers an idea of what the feel is going to be for what they're creating after the concept art is done. And then when we finally got to it, I'm Matt by the way, we finally got to the trailer and I took all of our final renders, our final animations, our final images, and I compiled them all in Movie Maker, made one long, about five and a half minute trailer, and put some music to it. And that's what we have behind us to show you. <coughs> so as you can see, we all had a, a set job that we had to do, whether it was in 3ds Max, Illustrator, or Photoshop. We all did one thing or another, and ultimately it culminated into the trailer that will be uh, shown in just a second. The game process itself uh, took a little less than the semester. Uh, we started about two weeks or three weeks into the semester. And it started all with pretty much brainstorming. And then from brainstorming the idea, we went into uh, Photoshop to create some concept art. And then from the concept art, we made the 3D models. And then from the 3D models, we came up with the animations. And from there, we finalized uh, the whole entire piece and created this trailer. So without further ado, please enjoy Grim Shadows.
uh, whatever it be, um, please uh, let us know and we'll have one of those people answer it. So does anybody have any questions? I think it's um, essentially you um, set the frame and then you know move the object how you want to move it at you know the next frame that, that animates it for you basically. Um, so same for say the, the swing set. If, if you're moving anything that doesn't move like this motion, if it does right. any kind of other kind of motion, then it's important that you put in the bone structure there and it's fine. Right. Otherwise it's just going to kind of glide across. As for the lighting that you were talking about earlier, um, each one you treat the lights like a light bulb. Um, you can put them in your e pile and then you adjust the setting to Basically, we all found, uh, figured out what kind of job we wanted to kind of focus on, so people focused on 3D modeling. What they like. Yeah, especially what they like. Uh, some people focused on 2D art concepts, stuff like that. Um, my job was a producer, so I did a lot of the uh, multitasking, um, setting up jobs, tasks, stuff like that, making sure uh, everybody's kind of working together. Um, and that's basically what we focused on. So we divided the work um, into those sets of groups. And by doing that, it made it a lot easier on everybody you know, to kind of focus on what they want to do. And is there going to be staying for the next semester for the script or the next? Um, I actually have no idea. No. I don't think we quite know what 